with someone you are with someone you are What's up everybody? Going to do an HTPC or home theater PC build for KB Lake today. Not going to get into breakdown in terms of performance and benchmarks and comparison to older uh, versions of the Intel platform, but really want to focus on building something that's HDCP 2.2 compliant and can be that all-in-one 4K Netflix app streaming box that's future proof uh, and you're going to need KB Lake for that. You're probably also going to want a Z270 platform motherboard but a warning for you all, make sure it's a 2.0 HDMI out. They're still putting 1.4s in these 270 boards. I don't know why, but don't let them pull a fast one on you. Just a quick note on my channel, most of the stuff that I do is really built with a mind to budget and not necessarily the best or the cheapest, just the best within a given tier in terms of cost versus performance. Keeping that in mind, this build is a little bit of an overkill. It's gonna be a little more expensive than what you absolutely need. So at the end of the video, I do a breakdown of where you can save some money on each component uh, that'll cut about 300 bucks off this build price uh, without sacrificing a whole lot of performance. I just wanted to show a build that has a lot of headroom uh, but also give you the opportunity to see where you can save some bucks. Uh, and just another quick note, I'm gonna break down next each component and it's maybe a little boring for some of y'all and maybe a little long so there are going to be links in the description to skip ahead if you want to jump straight to the time lapse build or the budget section and finally everything that i'm using in this review is linked in the description for quick and easy reference for you guys but also want to give you a reminder that buying used is great for this kind of stuff New is easy and new is generally what I do, but I also try to save some bucks every once in a while and find that used product on eBay or locally, so keep that in mind. Just wanted to show you a quick parts list for this build not included is the M.2 operating system drive because there's so many different directions you can go. You see it's a little bit on the pricey side. That gives me a lot of headroom and flexibility for future uh, capacity, but at the end of this video, I will show in this build with this parts list just how you can shave a ton of money off of this and go cheaper so with the fractal design core 500 and it's it's got a small footprint but it's large enough to house an optical drive it's large enough to house a couple of three and a half inch drives for storage which i'm going to need it's got room for a standard size power supply and it's got room if you need it for liquid cooling i'm not going to be pushing my system too hard so i don't need that and important for a lot of people it's got the ability to to house a discrete graphics card a full-size graphics card instead of using that onboard video which i know is important to a lot of people there's a few alternatives that you might want to consider the node 202 also from Fractal Design, if you want something with a smaller footprint. The Thermal Take Core V1, if you want to showcase your internals a little bit and don't want to have that glass window uh, for reflections, especially if it's in your storage rack, that's a good option. And the Cooler Master Elite 130, it's got that boxy look that this Core 500 has, but it's a little more computery looking, but it's also a little bit cheaper. Ultimately, whatever you get, you need to make sure that it's going to be something that you have a little bit of headroom to grow in but it's also going to be something that you're happy with since you have to look at it every day sitting in your AV rack. For the motherboard I went with the ASRock or is it ASRock uh, Fatality Gaming version of their ITX Z270 platform. I originally went with the cheaper one because I didn't need all the bells and whistles that usually come with a gaming board but I found out after the fact that it didn't do 4k at 60 hertz and wasn't HDCP 2.2 compliant. I think it's got a 1.4 HDMI uh, out, which is a real problem given that that's the whole point of building this HT PC with the Z270 platform. I've actually made another video uh, that's going to showcase some of the issues that I've had and things to avoid if you're building your own. But if you are worried about which board to get, this one will definitely work straight out of the box. And if there are some issues with uh, HDCP handshake, they even walk you through on their website some of the ways to correct that. So I would recommend this one 
uh, again, DisplayPort and HDMI 2.0 output for those of you who are looking for the flexibility of either. For the all important processor, I went with the Intel Core i5 7500 KB Lake platform. Obviously, this is probably overkill for something like this. I just wanted something that had enough beef if I needed to do a lot of 4K transcoding in the future that I'd have a little bit of headroom. I think you can drop down to an i3. Just make sure again that it's that KB Lake platform. I know the integrated HD graphics 630 is uh, what this is rocking and it's going to be HD CP 2.2 compliant. It's going to work well with the HDMI 2.0 uh, outputs or a display port to get you what you need to stream that 4K Netflix or whatever in the future. For RAM, I went with the Kingston HyperX Fury 16 gigabyte kit, 2400 megahertz uh, DDR4. Honestly, anything in this space that you can find on sale, I would recommend. I don't necessarily, I mean, I love the Kingston brand, but there's plenty of others that'll work here and you don't necessarily need 16 gigabytes. This is probably an overkill. I think you can get away with eight just fine, probably even four though, good luck finding a four gigabyte kit uh, for this platform. For the CPU cooler, I went with the Noctua NH L9i. It's a really low profile cooler. It's super quiet and it gets the job done. Again, as mentioned in the case segment, if you want more aggressive cooling, you can always go with water cooling. For those of you who aren't pushing your system real hard, who don't feel the need to overclock or have any kind of high temp control needs, something like this will certainly fit the bill. There's a ton of options in the cooling space. I just went with Noctua because they make a really good product that's really quiet, really well built, and has a slim profile. For storage, I went with two four terabyte Western Digital Reds. I'm gonna run a RAID Zero Array. To give me eight terabytes of storage, you can go cheaper. I think some Seagate drives uh, are still pretty good. Save you about 30 bucks a drive. I got these because they're a little more rugged. They're ready to stand up to a beating because they're built for network attached storage, constant reads and writes. Uh, so that should give me some durability. Went with an M.2 drive for our OS drive on this build. I'm using the Western Digital Blue. I got it super cheap. Uh, even though the Z270 platform does support the faster PCI uh, M.2 SSD drives, it's really overkill. I know all this is overkill, uh, but it's going to be a lot faster than I needed. So I went with cost savings in this case instead of performance. Um, and for a straight up home theater PC, I think you can do the same. <laughs> You are with someone you are Oh,
right, so obviously we've talked about how this build isn't the cheapest build out there. You can actually go a little bit cheaper and save some money while still keeping a pretty good uh, performance ratio there. So I want to run through a few things that you can do to save some money. First of all, the i3 KB Lake still has the HD Graphics 630. In previous versions of Intel processors, it's sort of kneecapped the lower end of the spectrum in terms of video performance. But this one has the 630, so it's going to have the HD CP 2.2 capabilities there so you can save about 80 bucks um, secondly you can drop the Noctua fan or any other case fan if you want again if you're not doing any sort of heavy computing uh, stock fans gonna work just fine which would save you a quick 40 bucks here Next up, we've got the RAM. We talked about it earlier. You can go eight gigabytes here pretty easily. They go on sale all the time. I've got 16 in this one in case I want a game in the future, but eight gigabytes of RAM here, gonna save you 50 bucks. Then we've got the hard drives. So Western Digital Reds are a little more expensive because they're made for network attached storage. You can go with the cheaper Seagate option, knocking two of those off in terms of price, and you're gonna save 60 bucks. And Next up, you'd think we'd go with the case, but I don't think we're going to save a whole lot with case, maybe only 10 or 15 bucks. So in this space, just get what you want. But finally, the cheaper PSU, I've got $20 savings here. These go on sale all the time. So don't hesitate to look out for those. And again, you don't need 430 watts here. So you can go up or down on this build, but I want to give you a couple of options here, or a couple of paths to take. And with our final build price of 922, we can go even cheaper 672 if we take the, the route outlined here. But keep in mind, this doesn't include the M.2 storage drive for the OS. Uh, so that's going to add anywhere from 50 bucks to a couple hundred bucks based on what you decide for uh, your OS drive. Okay, so now I just want to show that we've actually got this thing set up. Real quick, I want to show you how we've got the RAID array going, seven something terabytes, you never get the full storage amount. We've got the RAID set up. I want to show you the display settings where you can see that uh, we actually do have 4K resolution outputting to the screen. And another thing that you want to check um, is your refresh rate. If you're going to want to do 4K and ultimately HDR when the Creator's Edition of Windows comes out, uh, you're going to want this thing at 60 hertz, and it shows that we have that capability here, where in the past we didn't. And finally, let's jump into Netflix. On the other versions of the app, you usually see like a 4K row of movies, and that's not present here. But what made me notice that I actually did have 4K output was that if you look on a 1080p version of the 4K app, you'll see no Ultra HD 4K uh, badges on any of the individual videos. And here you obviously see that we have that. So I did a side-by-side -side test with a, four, with a 1080p monitor and actually did not get that. Um, so it's a hidden kind of thing that you may not notice uh, when you're putting together your, your build and you think, oh crap, I don't have the capabilities. You probably do. Just go in and check an individual video instead of looking for that 4K row. All right, that's pretty much it for this build. It actually turned out pretty good. Uh, I think if I had to do it over again, I might go a little cheaper on some components, but probably not the processor. Um, so in the comments, I'd love some feedback on what you thought about this build, how you would do it differently, if you've already done one and what issues you ran into. Uh, if you liked the video, how about a like? If you loved it, I'd love a subscribe. Thanks so much, y'all. Have a great week. God bless.